Welcome to sunny Southern California where it's freezing today. It's not that cold. Well, well for you it's on not. the chilly side, but it's not that bad. Were you born or raised in New York? No, no, no. I was born in South Carolina, but I, I spent most of my time in New York. So New York was sort of like home base. Charleston. Stephen, the guy who just left was from Charleston. What part oh, yeah? of, what part of Dylan, South Carolina? Dylan, actually. Where's it's a tiny, Dylan? tiny little town like right on the North Carolina, South Carolina border on the South Carolina side. On the South Carolina side. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when did you move to New York? Well, um, I grew up in a, a strange family that was always traveling a lot. We were always traveling and, and we played music together. So we were always between South Carolina and you New York. You explain a little bit more. So we when you were say a strange family. Well, there, well, they were just sort of like these roaming gypsy, you know, mentality. My parents, they, right. they just wanted to travel around a lot and um, and play music. And play music, and then as we, we were born as kids, we were just sort of like added to the band. So I was actually born in Aruba. But that's Very just because nice. my mom's from there, and we were on a trip through there, and then I just happened to be born there, and then we left like three weeks later. And then um, it was pretty much all over the world, you know. Right. So originally South Carolina, born in Aruba, New York was sort of like a big home base for us. Um, but between that, all over the world. What happened to that band? Um, they are still doing their thing. They are? You know what I mean? Yeah, I play with my sister sometimes. She lives in New York as well. Um, but, you, you, you know, said, uh, enough of this family There's ten stuff. of us. Ten brothers and sisters. Ten? And my parents. So they're sort of like all over the place still. That's a, that's a pretty, uh, a pretty amazing uh, it is. backstory already. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares if you can sing or play or anything? Yeah, like, I am. That's, just, that's enough of a story at, at that point. Yeah. So, so you're in New York and then... You decide, I'm done, i got to strike out on my own? We were in New York, and then we all went, went to Germany on a trip, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go back to New York and, and do my own thing. And it was definitely and time for me to do that. how old did you decide that? I was like 21. I was like pretty much older. So right? last year? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much last year then. Very, very that. recently. But, um, you know, I mean, it was like, it was weird because, like, you know, when you grow up in that sort of environment, um, it's like it's a tight unit, you know what I mean? And you're part right. of like a band, but you're also part of a family. So it's sort of like you have to make the decision what you're going to do with your life. Like, I'm, am I going to do my own thing? And I feel like in that situation, it's a little bit even harder to like break away and do your own thing. You know what I mean? See, I generally ask a lot of artists, what, what was the turning point for you to, yeah. to decide to pick up an instrument or become a singer? But yeah. with you, it, there was never a choice. Right. And it's weird because even though I didn't have that choice, I still had to discover music again for myself because of the fact that I grew up doing it. It wasn't really my own thing. It wasn't really my own choice. So when I started doing music again, I had to sort of rediscover it. Like, wow, like, what do I really like, you know, as, as a separate entity? What did you family. find? I, well, I started out busking in the New York City subways. And that was really, like, my foray into the world on my own. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I, would pl I would play in the subway, and I'd meet all these musicians and, like, crazy characters and, and you know, these people and I would like learn from them and like I'd, I'd you know we'd sing together um, I actually put a band together of like we were all buskers. subway yeah we were all buskers we were all like you know 20 and um, uh, we were like um, we, the first it was me and the bassist and then we'd like wander around we'd like play whatever we wanted to and then we saw this drummer and he was like oh he's cool let's ask him if he wants to be in our band and so it was like and you know we got together and that's when we started playing that's when, that that's when I really started writing as well right and getting more to being a songwriter and 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 really getting into like the technical, technical what, what did side. you what did you find then as far as what did you like as far as music went because obviously when you're playing in the family stuff obviously when yeah. you're playing you weren't writing yeah i was see i'm really weird when it comes to that because i love pop like pop radio right so i was listening to that well, but okay, at the same time that was like I don't know, like um, whatever's on the radio, like Beyonce, um, Pink, you know. Right. And um, but at the same time, I'm also hanging out with these like a jam band type environment, and that's kind of like the music that I was doing was like jam band music. So I listened to a lot of local artists as well, yeah. and support that. So it was like a weird combination of like I love pop sensibility in terms of like writing, but at the same time. I like to add a twist to it, you know. So, okay, okay so you, when you're busking with these guys and putting weird stuff together, yeah, yeah. you don't know what their influences are, but you're listening no, to pop stuff really. on the radio. Right, and I didn't really have, I mean, I listened to music growing up, but it was all, it was a very strict environment, and we didn't really listen to secular music because it was like a religious thing as well. So I would listen to it, but only when I would sneak and listen to it. So it's not like I grew up listening to every single kind now of music. Say so this, when I heard these guys playing in the subway that, that I was playing with, obviously they came from a background of like the Beatles, the Beatles and this and that. But I, I only heard it from them. 
Right. So I was like, wow, this is so awesome. Little did I know that they were actually copying somebody else. So when I'm taking that right. and like incorporating it to what I do, so it was like a weird, like a copy of a copy, but it was like, it was a fresh new start because I didn't really know about it. So it was like interesting. Well, I have news for you. The Beatles basically ripping off American R&B since day one. Oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah. a little bit of skiffle music in there, which they didn't right. invent either. But they put it all together, and then they came up with a quote unquote original, original right, sound. Right. But it's because we all heard about them right. from television shows that we didn't realize they were basically ripping off black American artists. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, same a lot of people Rolling have Stones. been doing that. So everybody's done that. Yeah. And that's, that's the sad part about it was. But uh, yeah. so, uh, the sad part about it is. <laughs> so uh, how did you get quote unquote uh, discovered that? Somebody well, I had been, Subway? Yeah, I was um, approached by a lot of people like manager. You like you meet a lot of people doing that. And at the time, I was like still in sort of like the separatist mentality. So I was like, mm, I don't really want to do that. I'm going to do my own thing. So I made my own CD, sold a bunch of it, like 30,000 copies. I would play it all over the city. I'd you know, sell my CD when I perform. And then finally, um, I did, that's, that's how you know, I was discovered was in the subway by um, my label. And you know, I got signed. It's been a process. It's been sort of like a process to get to right. where I am now. And this record, actually, that I wrote, um, was written like within a sort of a year and a half time period. And it's very introspective. It's very lyrical based. It's very um, about what I was going through at the time. So it's like, yeah, it's like when you listen to it, it's more of an introspective type record. Interesting. Very yeah. Interesting. Um, Future-wise, it seems to me like you can go in any direction mm -hmm. that you want to mm -hmm. go. Yeah. Future-wise, I'm going to be doing a lot more, like I was saying, like beat-driven type stuff. Um, obviously, still writing about the stuff that I love to write about, which is not necessarily writing about like, like love songs or whatever. I like to try to write different things. Okay. Well, good luck in the future. Thank Continue you. Continue success. We will Thank chat you. later. Thank you.